We'll be, uh, we'll be pairing today on this presentation. Yeah, it's a new concept, uh, presentation, pair presentating. So we'll, we'll correct one another as we go along. <laughs> and we've got these little icons to remind us who's doing each slide, which actually are virtually life-size now, aren't they? So <laughs> st stand in front of them like that. Um, so yeah, we're, we're on the API platform team at Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs. Um, so we're on the team that own the platform. Uh, and uh, as, as you said, I'm a, I'm a BA on the team, it's a tech writer. We're fairly T-shaped, so we, we kind of knock into one another, we pair a lot. I might draft some, some documents, Mick will correct the tenses in them for me. Uh, and likewise, Mick, Mick's always got an opinion or two on uh, some of the more BA type things. So we, we do work very much together in the team. It's an agile team, so we've got devs, QA, um, a bunch of uh, UX and design people as well. Um, so we're going to talk uh, about, it's an experience report, we're going to present the HMRC developer up to you, which we've been working on over the past few years, and we're going to tell you about some of the things we've learned as we've, as we've gone along. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, 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 I tip my hat to some of the other presenters and the quality of the, uh, the, the slides. Ours is very much an MVP, we've gone for the very plain uh, white on black with bullet points style, retro, if you like. Um, <laughs> So yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's an API platform for uh, third-party software developers. Often it's accountancy software that integrate with HMRC, but not only accountancy software. So down here, some of these guys you might recognize if, you, if you've got an uh, accountant or you, you're in that business. Mortgage Brain, though, um, uh, they're in the business of mortgages, mortgage applications. So we've got, um, that's, an, that's an API consumer we, we didn't predict. So back to, to Lorna's point, we don't know who's going to be using our APIs. Uh, in a year's time, they, they popped up out of nowhere and suddenly announced they were wanting to use our APIs. Could they get uh, signed up, please? Um, we've, uh, if anyone's worked in public sector, you'll know that there's a standard process for delivering uh, digital services, and you go through alpha, beta, and into live. Uh, you're supposed to spend about six months in beta doing a lot of user research and honing your UX, etc. It's taken us a little bit longer than that. It's quite a big service compared to other government services, so. We're in beta for two and a half years. We've got quite a lot of APIs, uh, uh, 52 at the last count, uh, and it's a, a federated um, model, so we have API producer teams within HMRC. We don't do them all within our team, and that, that presents its own challenges around consistency, as you might imagine. Um, we got lots of traffic, high availability, um, as I say, 20 or more teams uh, producing APIs, and uh, uh, we've, we've got a lot of consumers, and the, the way to do that, top tip, uh, is to uh, be a government department and, and uh, create legislation that forces people to use APIs. Uh, we are definitely a monopoly in that respect, aren't that, we? That, that uh, humorously, when Making Tax Digital first started, it was going to be called Making Tax Easier, but they had to change it to making tax digital because they weren't sure that it was going to be any easier. Hopefully it will be, <laughs> but um, anyway. Uh, so, so that's us. I think uh, we're going we're gonna to segue on to a, we're going to start with, uh, with a demo and then we're, we're going to talk through it. So this is where I think I hand over to Mick. Yeah, this, this is, is where to offset, this bit. offset the, uh, the use of slides with very few pictures. So this is the, our, our um, portal, if you like, our developer portal called uh, HMRC Develop Hub imaginatively. Um, and you, we've got uh, a couple of different types of documentation on here. Feel free to go and have a look yourself. You don't have to log in to see this stuff. And like, you know, uh, if you're a UK taxpayer, you paid for this, so you might as well help yourself to uh, <laughs> some, some free examples. Um, so uh, hang on a minute. Who's, who's calling the golden shots? Go away. Um, so uh, yeah, the two, the two main types of documentation, we've got documentation about the developer of itself and how you use it. So. Uh, Gonna pop into using the develop hub there, Tony. Will Sorry, yeah, 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 I'm driving. Mr. Slide driver, demo driver, demo. Never mind. Um, yeah, so this is this is all about what you do with it. You know, um, the, the real basics. Um, you can't develop software on this hub. You develop your software elsewhere, and you integrate with our APIs on this hub. You know, you, you create an account, you create a, um, integration with our sandbox environment for testing, and then you apply to go use our live data with real humans, information like ooh, everybody in this room, actually. Um, so uh, that's the sort of overview of how you use it. Um, what part of it, the thing we use is uh, a standard called the OAuth2 um, journey. If you've ever logged into a website, 
using your Facebook credentials. It's similar technology. Um, this is where you can log in. Uh, sorry, you can give permission to some software to you to, to disclose your data to, a, to software. Sorry, using this OWASP standard. Um, it's quite complicated, and we take uh, great pains to explain this to developers. But that doesn't mean they understand it first time by any means. Um, there's a lot of it. There's a lot of it. This yeah. is this is the page that we get the most feedback and trouble with, isn't it? We get a lot of support calls. Yeah, we've iterated this a few times, haven't we? And it still still needs to improve as yeah. well. Yeah, um, that's the sort of documentation about the Dev Hub. The actual crux of the matter, of course, are the API uh, calls themselves. I said we got 50. Uh, you won't see them all here because some are in private trial or privately owned by people like Department of Work and Pensions and the Home Office. Um, but you, if you look down here, if we, this is our, our list um, of APIs, just in alphabetical order, no, no grouping really here. That's something we're looking at introducing later. Um, we'll, we'll show you that in a bit. Um, but if you want to jump on a, a, a random API there, Tony, the, perhaps one of ours. We, we also uh, we create some APIs ourselves as, uh, as exemplars for other API teams, producer teams. So you can see here, any, any API you look at is pretty much going to look the same. Um, it's got standard headings, got some standard metadata at the front, whether you can use it in sandbox or production environments, what the base URLs are. We start off with some standard headings, like an overview of what you use it for. Um, uh, this next section, data availability, is slightly interesting because it provides a lot of context about this API. It's a weird one because if you use it at the wrong time of year, it doesn't actually work. Because the data works, not there. you just don't get any data. Yeah, you don't uh, get any data. Always so. works. Oh, <laughs> it correctly gives you a 404. Sorry, mate. <laughs> um, but that we've added this information, um, you know, as we've iterated the API documentation to to meet an unmet user need, as they say. Um, so this wasn't here before. But this is typical of the contextual information we're finding that more and more we need to provide so developers can understand what context they use an API in, not just how to call it. Moving down, we've got the standard sections about versioning errors. Um, and as we get to the bottom here, um, testing, you'll see the actual resources, which we're interesting with. We're going to rename endpoints because um, our users are giving us feedback that the, the common parlance in the, in the developer street, as it were, is that these are endpoints, not resources. Um, and if you dive into the actual uh, resources themselves, you can see this is a relatively simple one endpoint get API. Um, you can see the, the standardized layout for the path names and parameters and request headers and all that good stuff. Um, and that'll look the same for whatever API you're going to, you know, the same styling, the same layout to make it easier for developers to jump across APIs, even though they've all been produced by different API producer teams. I was going to mention something there as well, which was uh, uh, Andrew, I think it was, was talking about different languages. It's very much the case that you mix uh, the plain English language with the language of, of uh, REST in your documentation. We, we've tried to distinguish them by, I don't know how, well, how clearly you can see it on here, but the, the snippets, we always put them in a, in a different font with a little box around them so you can spot that we've flipped between language. So that case example, I think, where something was pluralized, oh, it was ID in lowercase or uppercase. You know, that, that's a little device we use just to uh, show the flip between the two languages. Is that, is that the end of the demo? Uh, I think so. Yeah, I guess so. Except to notice that a little thing down here has popped up. Ah. So uh, we'll, we'll talk about this in a minute. We've been, we, we recently added the pop-up tools, <laughs> uh, pop-up surveys. So there's one on this page. How easy was it to use this documentation? And, and I think if you say difficult or very difficult, it asks you to say why, doesn't it? So we get some qualitative uh, uh, information as well. And then on, on the page with the big list of APIs, we say this pops up after a 30 seconds or a minute or something. Uh, did you find what you were looking for? Uh, yes. And if not, what were you looking for? Um, and we'll talk about in a minute how, how powerful this has been. Uh, OK. So back to presentation mode. Next. It's you again. It's me again. Your head again. Um, yeah. So. Uh, we're filling the background in before, here before we sort of tell you what we've actually learned. But um, in terms of writing and uh, writing our documentation, 
we, we uh, face an interesting layer of style guides, the style guide gentleman earlier. Um, we've got sort of gov.uk style guides that are developed for public services, you know, for, for everybody in the street who are using those services. We've got um, a, a next, next layer of, of uh, style guide for tax-related information. There's some syntax around tax and uh, concepts around tax that don't really apply in gov.uk world generally. And then because we're talking to specifically a developer audience, we end up having our own um, style guide as well, although it's a much shorter one. It, it layers on top of the other two. Endpoints or resources, that exactly, kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, you won't find that in the gov.uk style guide, I guarantee it. Um, and we're also you know, fighting a lot of inconsistency among different groups within HMRC in terms of how you even talk about uh, taxes or, or fields of data that relate to taxes. So um, company benefits and employment benefits as a case in point. Um, and pairing, yeah, we, we're doing this to illustrate pairing as much as anything else. Um, Tony's a subject matter expert and we write together quite a lot um, with looking over each other's shoulder and correcting errors and <coughs> making suggestions. Best done in real time if you can. It's more efficient that way, although you can do it asynchronously using the, some of the collaboration tools. Okay, back to me. So, uh, we bet the farm on Rammel, uh, not Swagger, uh, a couple of years ago when it wasn't clear who was going to win that race. So, uh, we chose Betamax. For, for those of you that are... <laughs> Those of you that are old enough to remember that Betamax versus VHS debate. Specifically, Rammel 1.0, supported by JSON schema. So JSON schema is where the, uh, the field descriptions and constraints are, are held. Um, as I mentioned, we've got a, a whole bunch of API producer teams. So each team produces their own Rammel documentation. We have a disappointingly small number of technical writers at HMRC. You, you can see 50% of them just over there. And the, the other 50% started last week, I think, yeah, didn't they? Um, so, um, yeah, we, there's, a, there's a battle in uh, HMRC to, to get documentation taken more seriously. Um, uh, so the, the stuff you saw on the page there is HTML, obviously. We have an, under the covers a uh, RAML to HTML conversion tool, which is open source. I can't remember which one it is off the top of my head. Uh, styled up in a, in a, a gov.uk style. Um, so we definitely get consistency of style across the API, uh, the docs for the different APIs. It's always in the same format. What we still need to work on is consistency of, of the content and the language used, used in them. The style guide helps that to some extent, but you know, we're, we're still getting uh, API producer teams who are very busy uh, building APIs, to be fair to them, uh, to focus a bit more of their energy on, on the documentation as well. Um, currently... Our HTML generator has some limitations, so we can't currently include diagrams, which some API producer teams have wanted to do. A bit more on that in a bit. Um, so, yeah, that, that's how it hangs together under the covers. Um, yeah, so just to tell you how we get feedback on this stuff, because it's very important to us. We, we do a lot of user research. That's a, that's a government um, kind of requirement, I suppose, and a given these days. We have a sign-out survey and a beta banner feedback uh, survey that we had until quite recently. We have the feedback tool we, we just showed you there, Hotjar, which um, pops up um, in, in sort of context when people are looking for information, and we get a lot of, a lot of response out of that, sort of 100 responses a week, you know, because we think we're asking them what their pain is at the point of that pain. Um, and we iterate the documentation. We compile all this feedback into ind individual tickets for the pages and uh, share API doc feedback with the API producer team. So it's, again, like Tony said, it's a federated model for us. So it adds a bit of complexity. Cool. Um, okay, so one of, the, one of the gaps we've discovered with, with developers is that they need to understand the context of an API better. This is especially the case of some of our APIs that sit within uh, a tax regime. You have to register for a tax regime and do various things before you can actually um, use the API. If there's multiple APIs that you have to use in a certain sequence or combination again, that context uh, really, really helps. Um, and it's not just for developers as encoders. We've got product owners, entrepreneurs, speculatively looking at our API documentation, trying to make head nor tail of it. Uh, BAs and architects just wanting that high level, uh, not deep, but, but wide view of things. So that's one of the, and, and also roadmaps for programs in flight, so what's happening when. Um, so uh, we've been, that's what we've been working on. 
uh, at the minute, uh, I'm going to show you a prototype, hopefully. Which one is it? Um, yeah, this is part of it, isn't it? So th this isn't live yet, but this is, this is coming next. Yeah, this is, this is showing uh, that API list that we looked at earlier, but now grouped into particular tax regimes. So you can see uh, something like VAT, you know, you, could, you can see all of the documentation associated with it in this brave new world. So the roadmap and the service guide are, are those contextual documentations Tony mentioned just now. The REST API is the traditional API. The test user API is the way we, we generate test data um, test in the support. sandbox. Test support test API, support. sorry. Um, is, is to generate test data for devs to do sandbox work. Notice we also have some XML APIs from days of yore as well, yeah, from the right. previous decade. Um, I'm going to skip over the roadmap because yeah. of time. I'm going to go straight into the service guide. So this is the thing we've been working on at the minute, isn't it? Yeah. And quick, quick shout out to the GDS Tech Doc team here um, who uh, provided the template that we're using here. This is, uh, was using it in different ways, which was never intended. Um, but it's working quite well. This is our second attempt with, uh, with users to do this. Um, We've split up the sort of end-to-end -end journey on the left here, as you can see, to set up uh, obligation returns, penalties and appeals, and close down. Those are all steps within uh, an agent or a business use it, submitting VAT returns, basically. Um, and we're trying different, different experiments with diagrams to see if people can uh, use them, like them, um, access them properly. Um, there's not a lot of diagrams in the, in the gov.uk world, but we're hoping to reintroduce them to some extent. We've noticed in user research as well that some of our users are real visual thinkers. They will gravitate towards anything that's an image or indeed a code snippet. Some of our developers much <coughs> prefer to read in a programming language than, than in English. Um, so trying to get uh, images in there, um, uh, diagrams in there, feels like a, an important part of this for us. So very much in progress. Is yeah, this, literally, it? it's being tested right now, I think, in, uh, in Edinburgh, in, in <laughs> as Scotland. we speak. OK, um, what's next? Uh, I'm going to gloss over this a little bit. This is just to say that we have a governance process at HMRC, which is relatively lightweight, maybe could be more lightweight. We try and help API producer teams through design, delivery. Um, there is... Uh, uh, gov.uk gov GDS has a, a digital service standard that all government departments are supposed to follow. HMRC is, is working with, with GDS to try and develop a, a kind of a version of that that's um, an API specific one. So um, it's not currently public, it's on our internal Confluence site, but we, you know, we're, we're defining uh, good practice guidelines for producing an API. Uh, because it's number 16 doesn't mean it's not important, but it is in there. So produced comprehensive self-describing documentation is one of the uh, key principles of designing HMRC APIs. Uh, okay, so what have we learned in uh, about six or seven minutes? I think we've got to... Okay, let's, let's whip, go whip for through. it. Is that about right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Feedback's essential. Um, user research is just as important for programmers as it is for any public-facing service, because uh, developers come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, things that work are pop-up polls, analytics, and heat maps. Things that don't work are sign-out surveys and beta banner surveys, because people are trying to do something else when you interrupt them with a survey, fundamentally. Uh, hackathons are very useful. Uh, our API producer teams run them. And we're an API producer team as well, so we run them. And they're tremendously useful uh, live events to conduct. I think I will leave it there. But yeah, build, building our own API has really, really helped us to, to make the platform fit for purpose for our other API producers as well. Uh, I'm sure everyone will be happy to see this. Quality of documentation really matters. Uh, getting people on the team who think this, I think, really matters as well. So well, Mick and I will... will debate resources versus endpoints, the rest of the team often are holding their heads in their hands saying, can I please leave the room? Um, trying to get more technical writers in the game as well is important. Um, uh, yeah, and as I said before, the, the API producer teams are trying to juggle the priorities of, of actually building the API with documenting the API. Uh, one API team once said to us, well, we're an API. We don't need to do any user research. We disagree with that very much. So we, we, it's harder to do user research on APIs because you've got to go find your end users and they're a couple of points removed. Uh, but, um, but it's worth it. It's worth it, definitely. 
Um, yeah, go back to the point about developers. Um, you know, we do have some hard concepts to explain here, like the OAuth 2 standard. And not all developers are as experienced as you think they are. Um, and that's, you know, as, develop as experienced as our developers think they are. So, you know, you, we often take our internal developers as a benchmark, and that's a big mistake. You know, you need to go do your research, find out what people know and what experience they've got. Uh, Tony's already mentioned the visual thinkers, people who won't or can't read the text between those code snippets. Um, and this contextual documentation point, we're just re reiterating that here. The end-to-end -end journeys for all these different kinds of end users that the software developers need to understand. Yeah, I think uh, we've done some work on, on accessibility. That's always a hot topic in, in public services. And I think what we've discovered is that accessibility is important for APIs and API documentation, just as it is for, for other government web services. But the, the types of uh, disabilities you're working with are, are different. It's more generally about cognitive um, problems people have, so visual visual thinkers, visual learners, people with dyslexia, those kinds of things. We had quite a humorous uh, uh, user research session with a, a guy who claimed to be non-verbal. It was a remote session, and he came on and sounded very, very articulate. And at one point we said, uh, we thought you were non-verbal. And the guy said, oh, yeah, sorry, that's not me. I'm, I'm the spokesman for the person who's non-verbal. Um, so we said, well, well, where's he? Oh, he's not on the call, obviously. <laughs> so that was the useful session. Um, ease and speed of doc updates matters. Yes, yeah, so um, uh, we, at the minute, making change to our documentation, the API docs, the RAML, and the, the general stuff that's on the developer hub is, is a developer task. We have to raise tickets on our Jira backlog, get one of the devs to go in and make the content change, commit it into GitHub, and, and push it through the path to live to get it live. We've got a, a backlog with a, literally 100 what we call quick wins, little documentation changes, and they've been there for months. Um, so we're trying to improve that. We're trying to make it possible, for example, for Mick to go in and make the changes himself. It sounds like a really obvious thing. I know you talked about it before. We're a little bit behind on that, but we're definitely working towards it. It's not CMS like WordPress. It's more like a Docs' code model. Um, which is somewhere in between, but we're, you know, we're working on that. And the good news is I did my first one yesterday, actually. Oh, you, that's right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that was... Should have seen the look on his face last week. He looked really scared about it. I couldn't tell if that applause was pity or... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so just to finish, this is the, the takeaways we just covered, really. Feedback's essential. Documentation quality really matters. Developers come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, and the ease and speed of documentation updates is really important. And if you want to ask us... Yeah, have we got time for a couple of questions? Any questions? I know no, one, no one else has done them, but... Yeah, we've got a couple of minutes. If anyone's got any questions now... Otherwise, you can always grab us over lunch. Ah, that's why they don't want to ask questions, because it's lunchtime. Ah, right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there, there's one, look. Um, well, feedback tool that we've adopted, unusually, I guess, from the, the rest of the sort of sign-out surveys, is this Hotjar tool, and it's a, it's a fairly general purpose sort of uh, web track be website behaviour monitoring tool. But um, the particular thing that, that we found the benefit from were these pop-up polls, and we think that's because of it, the the point in time that you ask the question, which is when somebody's looking down a list of API documentation, looking for the one they want. You ask them, could you find what you want? And surprisingly, if they can't, they tell you. you know. it's, it's really easy to plug in as well. You know, it's just literally a couple of lines of code on, on each of your pages. Um, and I was just completely bowled over by how much feedback we got. To be fair, we got a few people saying, could you find what you're looking for? No, move these bloody pop-ups out of the way. But they're, <laughs> they're in the minority. And, you know, you take a little bit of the pain for the gain. We've got <coughs> tens of comments every day on stuff that we either look at and go, Yep, that we that that is that quick win that's been there for three months. That pain point, we will get that one sorted. Or do you know what? We hadn't even thought about that. We had people. Some of these APIs are are, are in a private trial, and we had people saying, I, "I can't find the the new making touch digital API. Where is it?" Off the back of that, we implemented a new feature, which makes it visible. But it says, you know, if you want to use this, you've got to join the trial. So, um, yeah, yeah, it, really, really powerful. Re really encourage that for sure. Um, 
man with a poppy. Have you, have you plugged in anal web analytics to it as well to see people's journey through the, the site? We, we do, we do, but we have trouble with journeys because it's a kind of logged in journey and, and de developers don't behave in sort of linear fashion. They go and do stuff, do a couple of things, go away, come back, do a couple of things, go away, come back. We can see what pages they spend their time on, and the, yeah. the hot jar gives us heat maps as well, showing us what areas of the page they spend their time on as well. Uh, the lady yeah, behind us. I was exactly going to ask that. I wanted you to go into a little more detail about the heat maps, how you're capturing them. And yeah, hot jar does it literally as a plugin. Hmm? Can you the hot jar. Other tools are available, obviously. Yeah, we're, but we're not in the business um, of recommending tools. Yeah, um, yeah, it's just it's it's was so quick and easy to to, to plug in and use. Yeah, it I feel like I'm recommending enough, doesn't yeah, it? Really? It takes a snapshot of the page and then then overlays um, a color coding dependent on a, the two th next two thousand clicks on that page, where they clicked and what percentage clicked where, that sort of stuff. I could probably do a bit of an offline demo of it if anyone's interested. After I think I could do it in the one or zero minutes that are left now. Um, any more before we break for, for lunch? Just one at the back there. I just wondered how you got consistency uh, across the API and the documentation. Did you have to cover every model? We didn't. So um, <laughs> <laughs> it's skin deep, isn't it? I mean, yeah. there's a, for, to my mind, there's a real, real tricky balance between uh, um, uh, autonomy of teams and governance of teams. So too much governance. Uh, creates a bottleneck and stops innovation. Not enough governance causes inconsistency. At the minute, we've got uh, virtually zero governance on, on API documentation, other than a brief, brief look through before APIs go live on the platform. We've got, as Mick said, style guides, RAML uh, producers guides, uh, but we need to get better at getting our teams to use them. Uh, the main, one of the main things we do, I guess, is produce what we call the exemplar APIs. We hope they're exemplary, where we try and do the best job we can of using the right style and level of detail for our API uh, or our APIs so that other teams will copy that. And where we spot other APIs have made obvious faux pas, we get on Slack and try and tell that team, look, can you sort this out? Can you sort that out? But uh, it's not brilliant. It, it could be a lot better, but it's not, it's not, it's not atrocious, at least all the docs appear to look the same because they've got all the, the, the same formatting. RAML forces them to specify, is this parameter required or optional? What type is it? And all of that stuff gets surfaced in the, in the docs as well. Uh, so it's, a, it's an ongoing challenge for yeah. us. And the more complicated the API, the harder it is, I think, it's fair to say. Okay. We probably ought to stop there. Um, but thanks for listening, everyone. Uh,